Okay, we're continuing on with our series. Uh, this time we're moving to chapter four, forces and friction. In this course, we only cover the friction component. So we're starting uh, and around objective five, six uh, range, okay? Uh, if you don't have the worksheet, you can download this worksheet off of our Blackboard site. Otherwise, you can just follow through with me if you like and complete your, your learning. Okay, so let's start out with friction. So we have two different types of friction. Um, we have what would be known as static friction, and we have what would be known as kinetic friction. Okay. Static means it's at stationary or at rest, okay, so it's an object that is not moving, or else kinetic, which is an object that is moving. Okay. When we calculate friction, it doesn't matter if it's static or kinetic. Uh, the equation that defines friction is going to be our force of friction is going to be equal to mu times r. Um, and what we have in there is, first of all, mu, which is our coefficient of friction. We have r, which is the reaction from the surface. Uh, I'll see that in a second. And then we also have this, which is the force of friction. Okay. Um, and again, it doesn't matter if it's kinetic or static. Um, we're going to calculate it the same way. Although, when we do find our mu values, there may be differences between static and kinetic. Um, Okay, so if we look at what are the forces acting on a block pushed on a flat surface, um, here's what we're looking at. So we've got our block, flat surface, and we have a few forces that are acting on it. So first of all, if it's at rest, um, we have a weight that's pushing down, and we have a reaction pushing back up. And if this doesn't have any other forces pushing up and down, my weight would be equal to R. We also may then try to, let's say, push it, which would mean that I would have a force of friction that would start to resist that push. Okay, so for a block on a flat surface, those would be the four basic forces that may be acting on it. And the forces that come into play for my friction are going to be my R and my force of friction. Okay, let's do an example. So I have a box sitting on the concrete floor. Sounds pr pretty familiar. And um, the box is 100 kilograms. And I have to provide some push just to get the box moving. Um, I'd like to know what the coefficient of friction is. Okay, so we have our box. Let's draw a little diagram. First of all, the 100 kilos, uh, we want that as a force, so weight is going to be equal to 100 kilograms times 9.81, so 981 newtons. So 981 newtons is pushing down with no other vertical force. I would have 981 newtons pushing up, which would be my R. I push across and 460 newtons of force to push it. And at the point of it just starting to move, um, I would just have to meet the push 
my friction. Okay, so as soon as I just exceed that amount of friction, then this block would start to move. So my force of friction is equal to mu times r. However, I'm trying to solve for my coefficient of friction, mu. So mu is equal to force of friction divided by r is equal to 460 newtons divided by 981 newtons. And that ends up equaling 0 0.469. Sometimes I may say, because that is a static case, um, I may call that my mu s, so static friction. The sliding friction is a little less. And if I went through the same approach, what I could find is that my kinetic friction in that case, the sliding friction, uh, the coefficient for that, um, 0 0.38, which would be 430 newtons divided by the 981 newtons is where I got that from. Okay. In your textbook, there's a term that's deemed to be friction angle. Okay. And uh, friction angle is a little kind of tricky to, to think about, and I'll do my best to explain it here. Um, go back to my box. So here's my box on the ground. And we have a few forces that are acting. I've got a weight pushing down. Action pushing back up. I've got my push and I got my force of friction. Okay, so when I find my what I deem to be a friction angle, um, friction angle can be viewed as if I take my two my two components of friction and I lay them out in a right angle triangle. So my force of friction goes this way, my reaction comes up, and that would be a right angle triangle. Um, there. Okay. This angle is what's considered to be my friction angle. So it's one of the angles from that right angle triangle relating to the, the arrangement between the reaction and the force of friction. Here's where that has some value to you, okay? Is that if we look at this triangle and we take our trig relationships uh, what we can say is that the tan of theta is going to be equal to force of friction over R. And this is pretty powerful because we've seen force of friction over R before, and that was right up here. So this tan theta is not only equal to the force of friction over r, but it's also equal to the coefficient of friction. Now, that doesn't give you a whole lot of context just on its own, but let me give you another example of where this friction angle comes from. So, if we have an inclined plane, so we've got an inclined plane, and now I put my block on it. At some point, at some angle, this block is going to start to slide down the ramp. Okay? The more friction there is, the higher the angle it would need to be. This friction angle is also equivalent to the angle that we have to incline that plane before that block starts to slide. Let me lay out for you how that comes 
So when we have our object, what we have is some weight pushing down, and that weight gets broken up into a component that pushes against the block or against the ramp and a component that pushes down the ramp. Okay, I'm just going to draw that in a little more detail over here. So we had our component that went down, W, we had this component down here, and we had this component down here. Well, when we look at this angle, or this triangle, um, one thing that's interesting is that that angle is the same as my theta of my ramp. Okay, so I can use some geometry and similar triangles to show that that angle is the same. And with that angle the same, what I have is essentially a couple of things. I have this component here that's pushing downwards into the ramp, okay, and it's going to be equivalent to the reaction from the ramp pushing back up. I'm also going to have this other component which pushes down the ramp, and this guy has to be equivalent to my force of friction. So once again, if I look at my trigonomic relationships, trigonometric relationships, um, tan of that angle is equal to force of friction divided by R. So a separate way that I get to that relationship. And that guy not only is equal to force of friction over R, but my tan of theta is also equal to mu, because mu is equal to force of friction over r. And if I wanted to find the angle that it would start to slip, theta is equal to my inverse tan of mu. So if I know the, the coefficient of friction, I can predict what angle will it start to slide if it's on an inclined plane. Okay, so a couple of sort of important relationships dealing with friction angle. Okay, so if we know the friction angle or it's given to us in a problem, we can always use that to find the relationship of the coefficient of friction. Okay, so let's look at just a couple of examples on that. So we have to find the coefficient of kinetic friction UK and the friction angle if a load of 800 newtons requires a force of 200 newtons to slide it across the floor at constant speed. Okay, so we've got our block. It has a weight pushing down of 800 newtons, which means I have a reaction pushing up of 800 newtons. it with 200 newtons, which means that my force of friction is also going to be equal to 200 newtons if it's going at a constant speed. So those forces balance and I have a constant speed. So if I want to find the coefficient of kinetic friction, my UK is going to be equal to force of friction over R is going to be equal to 200 newtons divided by 800 newtons equal to 0 0.25. Okay. And since my tan of theta is equal to force of friction over R, or else mu. Um, theta is going to be the inverse tan of mu. It's going to be the inverse tan 
of 0.25 and that guy ends up being about 14 degrees if you're in degree mode on your calculator make sure you are so this block if it was inclined at 14 degrees is about the point where it would start to slide on its own down the ramp. Example 10, a 1200 kilogram load just starts to move when the friction angle is 9.21 degrees. Find the applied effort. And so the friction angle 9.21 degrees so my theta in this case 9.21 degrees um, I know that the tan of theta is going to be equal to mu so the tan oops, of 9.21 degrees is going to be equal to mu and 0 0.162 is that value which is equal to mu. Okay, so if I draw out my block, it's got a weight pushing down. If that's the only downwards force, I'm going to have a reaction pushing back. The weight in this case is going to be equal to 1200 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared is going to be equal to 11772 newtons. So 11772 newtons is balanced by a reaction of 11772 newtons. some push, which is going to be resisted by my force of friction. Force of friction is equal to mu times r. My force of friction is equal to 0 0.162 times 11772 newtons. And that's 1,907 newtons. Um, since we only have one force pushing back and forth, um, we could consider either like our, you know, sum of forces to the right have to equal sum of forces to the left, um, or we could visually see that force of friction has to be worth p. Um, but what we can say is, yeah, force, sum of forces to the right, if it was more complicated, it has to equal sum of forces to the left. So what's going to the right is my force of friction has to equal P. And since force of friction is 907, 1907 newtons, that's what I have to have as my value for P. Okay, thanks. We'll have one more component on forces not parallel to the plane to finish off our friction components.